Hello, this is Wannery Tanner with the Metal Clay Artist Magazine. I am going to be demonstrating how I use the Silhouette Cameo to create textures out of scratch foam. The first thing we're going to do is discuss how we turn our drawings or JPEGs into the right format for the program to communicate with the cutter. So here we've got my basic design. I'm going to show you how we open this in the Silhouette Studio Design program, which comes with the machine. You can also download this program for free online. So we're opening our image here, which is just a basic JPEG, black and white, relatively simple line work type design. What we need to do is get the program to recognize which one of these lines we want it to cut out. Uh, so we're going to go over to the right hand side at the top and open the trace window. And there's going to be a box there that says select trace area. And this is going to tell the program which of these lines we want it to trace. Pretty simple stuff. So with the box I'm going to select these two images here, these two flower designs. Uh, and it's going to highlight those lines to let us know that it's about to trace those lines. Now that the image that we want is selected, we're going to go back over to the trace panel and you can see here on the right hand side the trace tool. That's going to actually go ahead and trace those highlighted lines. You can see as we pull the JPEG image uh, away, those fine red lines are actually the plotting track for where the silhouette is going to cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the original JPEG from my work surface so I can focus on the silhouette uh, cutout design. Initially the program thinks that all of these lines belong together and that they're all part of one unified image. And if you want to go in and, and alter each individual component, what you need to do is go up to the object menu and select release compound path. And that's going to give you control over each individual component inside of that design. Uh, and since this is going to be a scratch foam uh, texture, I really want to kind of minimize the amount of detailing in it initially. And this will give you an idea of how the line work will be translated when it's actually sketched out on the scratch foam. So you select each of these little tiny details here and you can just remove them from your work surface uh, by either pulling down the edit menu and uh, deleting it that way or you can just use the delete button on your keyboard. Uh, it's going to help really clarify the line work make it simplified. So here is the images after we've cleaned it up and what we're going to want to do is tell the computer that all of these lines belong together. That way if we want to move pieces around we don't uh, distort our image. So you go back up to the object menu and you do make compound path which is telling the program that all of these lines are in the same family basically. Uh, you can also do this by hitting group but when you make a compound path it actually tells the computer that it's all interrelated as opposed to, to just part of the same group of lines, which can be beneficial depending on what tools you want to use uh, to alter it. So again, we're going back in with the left hand side design and we're going to make that a compound path. Uh, so you've got your two images ready to go there to cut. As of now, the computer program thinks that we want to cut both of these designs out. Uh, and I just want to go ahead and do the poppy design there on the left hand side. So I need to open up the cut style uh, menu. And what I will do is actually select the image that I don't want to have cut. Now if you've got one that isn't selected and it is the one that you have cut, you'd kind of want to just do the reverse here. So the darker red lines is telling us where the program thinks it's going to cut uh, right now. So we're going to select this flower pattern on the right hand side and tell it no, we don't want to cut it. So you just go over to that panel there on the right hand side and select no cut. The next thing we're going to do is check the orientation of this design as it relates to the cutting mat. So what I do is I open up the page menu bar there on the right hand side. About two thirds down you'll see the reveal cutting mat tool and you'll just slide that around until you see enough of the mat so you know where your image actually lays on the cutting mat. The next thing we need to do is prepare our scratch foam to be mounted onto our cutting mat. And I'm just cutting maybe like a two and a half inch by four inch piece, nothing overly huge and I'll explain why we're doing a smaller piece like that here in just a moment. And I like to back my scratch foam with contact paper. You could also use packing tape. What this actually does is help stabilize that piece of scratch foam and allow you to do deeper impressions without punching all the way through the foam. Once you get that contact paper or packing tape uh, backed on to that scratch foam, what you'll want to do is kind of trim away the excess that you don't need. 
So here's the reason why we are doing smaller pieces. The rollers will actually leave an impression on the scratch foam. So we always want our designs to set in between those rollers. So keep that in mind when you're calibrating your design uh, on the cutting mat. So you've got your little scratch foam piece here. It's going to go in between those rollers. And this happens to be right at the 2 inch mark. So our design on the computer also needs to be at the 2 inch mark. Then we'll just hit the enter button and it will take it right into the rollers. Here's how we do low relief scratch textures. I'll go over uh, three different options here. Uh, there's a number of accessories that you can get for the Silhouette Cameo. One of them is this pen holder tool. Now this you can actually load a regular ballpoint pen right into the tool and then you would adjust that screw and it would actually hold the pen in place and you would put that in um, the same cradle that your blade normally goes in. So we're going to go ahead and take the blade out and you remove it by just turning it to the left, pull the blade out and then the pen goes in with the, that screw kind of facing out. It. So we need to go ahead and tell the program now that everything is set and ready to go and that we're ready to cut. So we select this little cut uh, tool here on the left hand top menu bar. It's going to bring up this window. We're going to go to change settings and double cut with the sketch pen. This is the technique uh, for the low relief textures. So we're going to change the thickness to 33 and speed to, to 10 and then we just send it to the machine by hitting cut. Another little trick you can do too is to grease the surface of the scratch foam so that pen just slides right over the top, especially if the pen doesn't have any ink. It'll just kind of keep things from pulling and tearing. Uh, and after it's all said and done, you can see here is the piece after it's been through the machine. Uh, and then here is an example of what it looks like uh, on silver clay. Another option is using one of the Silhouette uh, Gel Sketch Pens. Now these slide really nicely over the surface and they've got a pretty nice fine point tip. And that again just seats right into the cradle. And here is an example of the silver clay after it's been uh, pressed into scratch foam mold using the sketch pen. The other option is using that pen cradle again but using a really tiny ball burnisher uh, instead of a pen. That'll create a nice uh, really clean line, but you need to remember to only allow two millimeters of that ball burnisher to hang out, otherwise you'll just end up tearing up your scratch foam. And here's an example of silver clay using scratch foam that has been uh, scratched with that ball burnisher tool. Now this is what I really prefer to do, which is high relief scratch foam textures on the silhouette. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison of the high relief process versus the low relief process and you can see a pretty immediate difference in effects. You get a much softer effect with the low relief where with the high relief you get much more definition in line. Uh, so how we're going to accomplish this is by actually cutting into the scratch foam surface. Now when I mean cutting you're actually breaking those lines apart. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of the two line types we're working with. On the right hand side you can see a line whose edges were first cut with a craft knife blade and then compressed with a ball burnisher versus the one on the left which is just a line that's been created with a straight ball burnisher. By cutting the surface first we can get a much clearer expression of that same line. And now what we're going to do is just use our cutting blade. In this particular process I like to set it to 4 and you can just use that uh, tool there in the machine to change the settings and put it back into the cradle and uh, lock it into place. And this is going to cut that exact same design that we used for the low relief. It's the same line work and everything completely unaltered. The only difference is that I set the thickness at 10 and the speed is the same which is at 10. I'm going to back out our piece here and you can see that you get this really fine super clean kind of cut on the scratch surface. Now if you were to just use this you would get really delicate lines but I actually want to go in and deepen those lines. So now that the surface has actually been cut uh, we can burnish it uh, with a little ball burnisher. This is a one millimeter and two millimeter tool and we're going to revisit our image here and decide what it is that we want this design to do for us. Now I want to create um, cells for enameling so I'm actually going to compress the black lines and that's going to create these silver walls that we can um, fill with enamel as opposed to doing it the reverse. Uh, so it just depends on what what it is that you want to do with it. So we're going to go back with the ball burnisher, go over all of those, what would be the black lines, and press that in gently. Now that the surface has been cut apart, uh, those lines will compress really easily and really cleanly. 
Now we're going to work gently and slowly until we get all the areas compressed. This really only took maybe five minutes, not even that, to finish. It's a pretty, pretty quick process. Now we're just going to test drive this texture, so we're going to lubricate the scratch foam. I've got a piece of copper clay here and a plastic barrier. I'll put the copper clay directly onto the scratch foam and then the plastic barrier on top of the clay and do one firm, gentle roll in one direction. This is going to prevent some of that ghosting from happening. And now that this is all firmly in place, what I do is I'll take that whole sandwich and I'll flip it over uh, and it's going to go back and just do that back side. Now so long as you haven't moved your clay around you won't get ghosting, you'll just kind of deepen those lines. Uh, but that may take a little bit of practice to determine if that's happening. So here you can see this is the very basic line work that we had just uh, burnished onto our scratch foam. Uh, the nice thing about this and especially with enameling is you can actually go back and do some low relief as well so I just take a needlepoint tool and do a few dots. Um, I'll also take a craft knife and just do some fine line cuts on the surface. So that's how I get that variant uh, depth of relief texture out of scratch foam, is kind of working, thinking in reverse here. And this is the impression in silver clay, uh, again using that same process of rolling as I had demonstrated before. Here it is after it's been dried, and I just did a little bit of superficial sanding on the surface. So you get some really cool, bold, clean lines out of scratch foam, which uh, is just remarkable uh, to me. And here is the piece fired and finished, just with a black patina, just to kind of show you the contrast there. And here is the same piece that's been enameled, so you can kind of see those layers of relief behind the enamel there really stand out.